Good day everyone, in this video I'm going to show you a new project which is the second version of my alarm clock. The first version had a lot of issues that I wanted to solve and also fell down and this broke it. So I tore it apart and created a new one uh, with some of the pieces that were left. Among them was the ESP8266 which is a very cheap Wi-Fi module. I didn't want to use the matrix LEDs that were already on the system because on the lower setting they were too bright at night. So instead I decided to use the TM1637 which is a 7 segment LED module. And here's the final result. I made the outside wooden box and I wanted it to be as simple as possible. So as you can see there are no switches, there are no buttons. If you want, for instance, to uh, turn it off, you just have to turn it upside down. The system is connected to my virtual private server via my Wi-Fi. Uh, to get what time it is and also at what time it is supposed to ring. So currently you see uh, me setting it on and off and the two dots on the screen are uh, displayed when there is an alarm that is set. So that's it for the general presentation. Now let's see how in my beautiful workshop I created uh, the wooden part. I bought this wooden ball for 4 euros in my local hardware shop. I used a meter box to cut the different pieces I needed for the project. As it's a big cube, I needed six pieces, uh, two that were straight and four for the corners uh, with 45 degrees cut. The first piece I cut was my reference, so in order to be more precise, instead of measuring between each cut, I used the first piece as a pattern for the others. The hardest part was when I had to make that squared window in which the LED display will have to fit. After I traced the exact dimensions of the window on the wood, I drilled a hole in the middle and then I used a copping saw to remove most of the wood. After that I used a file to finish properly until the display would fit perfectly into the window. Before that I had to remove the connectors because otherwise the board would not fit properly. In order to assemble all the pieces, I put them all on a tape and I used a brush to apply some glue all over the corners. I also used sawdust and uh, some glue to make some paste wood in order to fill the gaps that were remaining. I let it dry all night and this is what I had the following day. It was not perfect but uh, good enough for what I wanted to have. I then used a belt sander in order to send it properly with the grain 80. This is clearly my favorite part because you start to see what the piece is going to look like. I then sanded it with the grain paper, started with the grain 80, then 120 and finally 240. Then I marked on the back piece, uh, there is no mechanism to lock it at the back, so I needed to make it small enough to fit in but big enough to not move once I put it in the box. After that, I filled the gaps in the front using wood paste. To be precise, I used a knife, as in knife painting, and I find this tool, even if it's not made for that, very useful. Two hours after it dried, I did some sanding one last time. Now that we've seen the wood part, let's talk about the architecture of the project itself. Most of the choices I made were because I already had the components, whether that was from the previous version of my clock or leftovers from other projects. If I had started this project from scratch, meaning this was my version 1, I would have done things differently. For instance, I would have used a more advanced version of the ESP8266, which would not require an Arduino with it. But with the version I had of the ESP, which is the Dash-01, I had to combine it with an Arduino Pro Nano. 
instead of using the default firmware of the ESP, which is a Wi-Fi module, I uploaded my own code using the Arduino IDE. You can find a lot of tutorials on the internet about how to do that. I just want to say that the Arduino that you see here on the picture was just used as an FTDI and has nothing to do with the ESP. With my code on the ESP, the chip is taking care of connecting to my Wi-Fi, connecting to my server, and sending via the serial port the data to the Arduino only when it needs it. Simply said, when I send one character via the serial port to the ESP, it answers the data I need. It takes care of all the rest, connection and stuff like that. So the code on the Arduino side is much simpler. For the development, I first used an Arduino Uno. Once the code was good, I replaced it with the Nano Pro. The other components were a buzzer, a TM1637, which is the LED display module, a Mercury switch, and finally an adapter 5 volts to 3.3 volts for the ESP. And that's it, there was no need for RTC or external clock module. The time kept by the Arduino is synced so frequently that the drift between two syncs is so small that it's not noticeable when you're just displaying hour and minutes. While I've soldered all the components together, I made sure to use shrinking tubes everywhere I could to make sure that there would not be any shortcuts while everything is packed in the small box. And that's it, that's the final product. Everything fits into the box. The Mercury switch is uh, taped to one side of the box, and it is used to know if it is upside down or not. That's it for this video. I hope you liked it and that maybe it will help you someday or give you inspiration. The goal here is not to show you step by step how to do something like this, but to give you ideas. With this video, I'm also publishing the source code of the ESP, of the Arduino, and one part of the server, the part which is handling the connection. I really liked doing this project because there were both uh, woodworking for the box itself and also electronics. If you've liked what you've just seen, don't hesitate to put a comment. And also, if this helped you in any way to build your own project, I would be very glad to uh, see it.